Genesis chapter 37, 18 through 20. If you have it, can you stand? Let's stand to read the word of God today. I have a message this morning that's probably more prophetic and preachy in nature. It's not a whole lot of teaching this morning, but I do think there's something that I want to declare and remind you. It might be something reminiscent or something that you think about often, but I want to drill it down to us today because the enemy really does. There really is something uh, to do with dreams that are very important. Let me just tell you that your dreams are very important and they're important to God. And one of the enemy, one of his desires is to steal your dreams. It really is. He wants to steal, he wants to steal your dreams and make you believe they're not possible. I heard a civil rights leader say this about Dr. King. He said, you can kill the dreamer, but you can't kill the dream. You can kill the dreamer and not kill the dream. Which is interestingly enough, because when Martin Luther King stands up on that uh, great march on Washington and begins to tell his dream speech about a nation that would white men and black men would stand in the same place and they would worship and be able to communicate and we wouldn't be judged by the by the con we'd be judged by the content of our character rather than our skin color. He proclaimed that, and we see a lot of that. Look around, it's a multicultural church here, and we see that God is doing something in that way. But even if it has not come true yet or to the fullness of it, doesn't mean the dream dies with the dreamer. And so the enemy really does want to do a good job on killing the dream uh, and, and take out the dreamer or stop the dreamer from dreaming the dream, even if it seems as if the dream is impossible. Let's look at this dreamer here, verse 18. And they saw him from a distance, and before he came close to them, they plotted against him to put him to death. And they said one to another, watch this, here comes this dreamer. Here comes this dreamer. They plot to kill him, and they identify him as the dreamer. Now then, come, let us kill him and throw him into the pit, and we will say that a wild beast devoured him. Then let us see what becomes of his dream. We want to take out the dreamer so that we can see what becomes of his dream. You might be seated. I want to preach from the subject this morning, dream again. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Come on, look at him. Say, neighbor, dream again. Dream again. One of the most dangerous things to the devil, I really do believe this, one of the most dangerous things to the devil is a man or a woman that has a dream not only a dream, but something in their heart that they have not accomplished yet, that they believe to be of God. They, they want it. They see it. They haven't imagined it yet, or they haven't been able to imagine it yet, or come into it yet, but they dream. They reach. They desire to come into something more than themselves. I have to say this about me particularly, that what I'm doing right now, today, I was dreaming it when I was 12 and 13 years old. I had a vision. I desired this. I wanted to be preaching and I'm living in my dream right now. It's an amazing thing to be able to fulfill or walk in your dream or even live in the dream that you have dreamed. And the problem is with a dream, the enemy knows that if you really believe it, you will go after it. And some of us will go after it with such tenacity. And some of us will go after it with a vigor that can't be stopped. And we know that if we want somebody, if we can come into the dream that we have, then we know that the enemy is in trouble. He really is. I think about this as you're sitting in your seats today. I think about Vernal and Patsy and how, yes, they've gone to be with Jesus, but they dream this. They, they dreamed it. They believed it. I think of the people we found the other day, Wally did, uh, when you first bought this building, when you offered them so much money, and uh, Brother Mike was a big part of that, and they, they didn't want the money. They rejected it, and then they offered lower than what they had because somebody had a dream. They dreamed about this building that was a studio or, or it was a, a music hall before it was a church, but the only way that it could possibly become a church is if somebody had a dream. That right there would be a good place for a church and people to come in and in this dream people are getting saved and their lives are changing and things are happening what you don't realize today is you are sitting in somebody's dream right now dreams are powerful 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 things because they break or they bring us into the realm of faith and they bring us into the realm of possibility if we dream something and believe that it could really 
come to pass. That's why I say all the time that the greatest battle is not in the Middle East or in Korea or, or it's not in uh, uh, Iran or, or any of those places. The greatest battle in the entire world is not in Russia or Ukraine. It's right between your ears because the enemy wants to battle in your thoughts. He wants to make your mind have these limitations and boundaries that are formed in our mind. The reason I won't jump off this building today is because I don't believe that I can fly. It doesn't matter how many times I've sang the song. I know the lyrics very well. It doesn't mean I can jump off the building and fly. So I won't try to do it because I don't believe that it can happen. We set boundaries and limitations in our mind, and, and we, we, we begin to quench the possibilities. And that's what the enemy wants to do with your dreams. He wants to limit you. He wants to bring confusion. He wants to tell you that it's not possible. He wants you to believe that you cannot access or do it. Yes, your life situation may be rough right now, but the enemy wants you to believe that it's never going to change, and it's always going to be bad, and it's only going to get worse or worser, as some people would say. It only is going to progressively get worse and stain, and you shouldn't believe for the best. No, you should just get ready, because this is who you are, and this is what you can believe. But my mother used to tell me, Yes, and I, I believe that a black mother can never lie when she told me the devil is a lie. Come on, somebody. And oftentimes when he tells you that there's boundaries or limitations, it's just he's lying because he does not want you to pursue that which is possible. Oh, yes. Look at your neighbor and say, it's possible. Come on, somebody. It's, it's possible. Don't let the devil lie to you and tell you that it's not possible. Don't let him tell you that this is going to be forever. Don't let him tell you that the sickness shall end in death. No, but to the glory of God. Don't let him tell you that you're always going to be this way. It's a lie to stop you from dreaming. I say this all the time. The devil doesn't have to kill you to stop you from doing something in your life. He doesn't have to cut your arms off to stop you from laying hands on the sick. He doesn't have to take away your scholarship to, to, to go to college to stop you from going to college. All he has to tell you or convince you is that you're not smart enough and you don't have enough money, you don't have the resources or the ability, and he'll stop you from pursuing that which is a dream. But again, the devil is a liar. Yes, he is a liar. Let me say this very much. This, that this is what I, I'm holding this, and this is a real object right here. But just as real as this object is what's going on in the supernatural, what's going on in the invisible, what God is moving, just as real as this board that I'm hitting, there is a God that is more real who made this staple or made the chairs. Or, or I wish I had an amen if y'all don't believe that. Just as real as the seats you're sitting in is a God who made the seats that you're sitting in and he's more real than what you can see. And we believe this by faith. I remember the Lord telling me one day or convincing me that, that I'm not just correct, connected to the world by my sensual or by my flesh, by my five senses, but I'm connected to God by my faith and my faith is just as real as the five senses that I possess. And because I'm not just connected to the world by my faith, but I'm connected to, not to the world by my flesh, but I'm connected to God by my faith, it means what's going on around me should not move me as much as what's going on on the inside of me. All the things that we face, all the problematic experiences, they are real and we should not ignore them, but there is something even more real on the inside of us that makes us overcomers of what's going on on the outside. I wish I had an amen right there. So dreams can be spiritual. They can be supernatural. They can be miracles to cause us to, to glance beyond what we can see, to believe that there's something greater than we possess. It can cause us to run and drive and believe and go forth things. And the enemy's trying to come and steal your dream. Don't let him have it. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 says this. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that, what, that, that, so that that which is seen was not made out of things which are visible. We understand that the worlds were prepared by 
the word of God. And what is seen <clears throat> was not made by that which is seen. There is something invisible, something going on behind what is seen, forming and bringing together what does not exist yet. You know what that makes God? It makes God a dreamer. Because here goes God calling something out of nothing. Here goes God, the God who said, let there be light, and there was light. Light had never existed before, but he had dreamed it, and it happened. Here goes God who spoke with a word and formed things out of the words of his mouth, things that had never appeared before. The Bible says literally the host, he breathed out stars. This is a God who dreams. Stars come forth out of his mouth, the Bible says. Imagine how you, you, you think I got a big mouth. Come on, God's breathing stars out of his mouth. All of these things are being formed out of nothing. Why? Because God himself is a dreamer. Not only is God a dreamer about that which we see in the earth today, but he dreams also about you. We'll get to that in just a minute. By faith, we understand. Let me just say this. Man might say that something is impossible, but this is the response that the man of faith should have. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. With people, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Don't be deceived, my brother. Don't allow yourself to be lied to by the enemy. Listen, dream it. And believe by faith it with all your heart because he's able to bring that which seemeth impossible to the realm of possibility. Now I want to talk to the dreamers in the room today. And there may just be a couple of us here today. Maybe, maybe this message isn't for you because you don't dream. Maybe you're comfortable with life and life is what it is and you've been told this is where life is and this is how life's going to be and you're totally fine with it. But I want to talk to the people that are reaching for something that they've never grasped before. I want to talk to the people that are the first in their family to, to, in, to accomplish things that their family never accomplished. I want to talk to those who are dreaming about things that maybe have never happened to you and your family before. I want to talk to those dreamers and I want to tell you, keep on dreaming. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 through 29. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 through 29. This is an important verse. Because Joel is speaking prophetically, and it's so important that on the day of the birth of the church, Peter stands up and re-prophesies this prophecy. That's how important it is. He gets up and he says, hey, I'm going to re-prophesy this because it's still pertinent to today. And let me just say this. The fullness of this text has not occurred yet. It will occur before the day of the Lord comes. Watch this. It will come to pass. It will come about after this. It will come to pass. It will come about after this. So this is a real day in human history. It really will happen. In Acts, we saw a, a, a brief moment of it where God began to do it, but it wasn't the totality of it. Okay, here we go. I feel like preaching today because I'm getting real loud and about to sweat. Amen. Watch this. Notice the promise. I will pour out my, watch this, spirit upon mankind. God is going to pour out his spirit and notice the results of when God's spirit begins to be poured out. Watch this. Pour my spirit out on all mankind, which is a good thing that he says all mankind. Because not, he's not segregating this thing. He's not saying this is for black folk or for Jews or for Gentiles. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all mankind. Then he gets even more direct with this. Pouring out my spirit against all mankind. That's a good thing. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Notice this. It's not just for the boys. It's for the gals too. And notice what will happen. The Spirit will be poured out, and they will prophesy. Watch this. Old men and young men, watch what they'll do. They'll dream, dream. Your old men will dream dreams. And watch this. Your young men will see visions. Basically the same thing. But I, I love how it says this specifically for old men. And I think this is important because sometimes when you get a certain age, you stop dreaming. And this is what God is saying. Never stop dreaming. Young men will see visions, even on male and female. He makes sure he says it twice because that's very important. He's not limiting this just to men. 
He says, sons and daughters, well, if you happen not to be a son or a daughter, which all of us have been a son and a daughter or a son and a daughter, it, well, I'm just going to make it so. Male and female servants even, I will pour out my spirit upon in those days. Notice, I, God, will pour out my spirit to all mankind. And it will result in prophecy. Why prophecy? Why? Because God wants you to see things the way he does. Why is he giving you visions? Because he wants you to see past the natural and into the supernatural. He wants you to see past the possible and even see what is deemed as impossible. Some of you have been spoken over and been told things about your life that you'll never accomplish, that you'll never do, that you'll never be, but thank God God had a dream for you. Come on, somebody. I was such a character in fourth grade. My goodness. Now, it's about eighth grade, Sister Debbie, when I got athletic. But in fourth grade, I was a mess. Y'all don't know this. I was the greatest athlete in Vivian Field uh, Middle School in the history. There ought to be a plaque named the gym after me. I was amazing, okay? Anyway, they know this. Duncan and all this stuff. I just, you know, my knees. It happened, my knees. Daniel was there when the knees went out. It's a bad deal. Anyway. What I'm saying, Sister Debbie, is eighth grade is it's sad. I kind of peaked in eighth grade, really, I, but, but that's how good I was. If you're going to peak, peak at your But Anyway, Sister Debbie, in fourth grade, I had not become the athlete or the scholarly student I was supposed to be, and I was such a mess. I remember my fourth grade teacher telling me, Derek, you'd not, you'd be nothing but black and die. That's what she told me. I hope that woman got fired in recent years. I wish I knew her name. I'd have a lawsuit right now. Come on, somebody. Especially with this movement going on now, Black Lives Matter, I would have her job and her house. Amen. But we didn't have that back then. We didn't matter yet. We were, were going to get there. Somebody had a dream, and it's going to happen. Okay, I'm getting silly. That's why nobody pays me any attention. Sister Debbie, anyway, that's what she told me. And my point to that is sometimes we can hear words that limit us in our possibilities. I was too foolish to believe her. <laughs> gonna be nothing woman you'll just see come on somebody sometimes what is spoken over us can limit our dreams we let the words over us be the be the 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 roof or the ceiling to our possibility let me just say this that's one of the reasons why God gives us dreams so we can break that roof and break that ceiling so that we can see the power of God in our lives. Let me say this again. We talked about how God was a dreamer when it comes to his creation of the earth. Let me say that God was a dreamer in his creation of you as well. That's important to understand. Ephesians chapter 1, 3 through 5. Blessed be the God of our Father Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Watch this. Just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world that we would be holy and blameless before him in love. He predestined us to the adoption of sons through Jesus Christ to him according to his kind intention of his will. Notice that he was making this, making this choice, making this desire for you or this desire for you was held on the inside of him before the earth was created. Why? Because he's dreaming. He's like, it ain't go, it's going to be 2,000 years until Derek pierce, pierces in there, but I've already, I already love him. I already have a plan for him. If you don't believe it, this is what Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 says about you. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Wow, God already knew you before you even know yourself or your mama knew you or knew she was going to have you or whatever the case is. Basically this, there are no oops babies in the kingdom of God. There are no accidental pregnancies in God's kingdom. He knew you before the very foundation of the world and not only did he knew you, watch this, I love this, he has plans for you, plans for your welfare, not calamity, a future and a hope. Man, I love that about God. He has a hope and a future for me. It doesn't matter where I was born. It doesn't matter the, the circumstances to which I came into the earth. God had already had a plan and a purpose for me, and thank God about that, that it was a good purpose and it had a hope in it. Now, I was, I was born, <clears throat> you just do the math, I was born to a teen mother who had three children at that time, and, and, and uh, I, at 19, I believe, or so, she had me. Man, you look at that, in the sticks in the woods of Arkansas. My mother called me the other day and reminded me about how, she says, Derek, you, maybe, you know, you were 
born in the club or you grew up in a nightclub. And I did. We did. I keep telling y'all the story. It was a house on one side and a nightclub on the other side. That's where I came home to. And we lived there for, I mean, she lived there most of her life. And here I am. That's what my, my, listen, it doesn't matter the state of the home you came into. God has a plan for you. That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> doesn't matter the circumstances. Your life is valuable to God. And he already has a dream for it. I just thought about this this morning. I just stepped back and asked God, God, what are your dreams for me in the next coming months, years, decades? What are you dreaming for my family? God, reveal it to me so I can dream along with you. Man, I think we all need to pray that just for a second. God, what is the dreams that you have for us? What are the future possibilities that you rest upon us? And God, may you reveal it to us and may we run after it in Jesus' name. I love that. A future and a hope. What about my now? Well, he's got a future for you. A future and hope. Look at Hebrews chapter 11, 1 and 2. It is by faith... <clears throat> What we have, we see the dream, we hold on to the dream. We do this by faith. We do it by faith, seriously. We do it by faith. Watch this. Now, faith is the substance or assurance of things hoped for and the conviction or evidence of a thing that has not been seen. For by it, the men of old gained approval. That's very important as well. It just means that the men of old had something that they reached on to, that they had faith into, and because of that, they were approved. In some verses, or if you look in Romans, it talks about how they were accounted righteous, uh, particularly Abraham was accounted righteous by his faith, believed in something, hoped in something, and they were approved or even accounted righteous. So notice this. Faith is, it's the substance of things hoped for. Let me just say this about faith. Faith is as real of a substance as the seat that you're sitting in. It's currency. It's real and it's important. It's valuable to God. You know what? That's why the preacher's job is to proclaim the Bible. In the proclaiming of the scripture, your faith is increased. That's very important. It's very important. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and how should we hear without a preacher? Let me just tell you something. If you got some old jack leg preacher that is preaching to you and it decreases your faith, you need to get another preacher. That's the truth, Brother Justin, right? I mean, that's what the Bible should do. It should push us. It should shake us. It should rebuke us. It should make us stand. It should make us more confused and more problematic and oh lord you mean what and i really will say this that's what's going on in the church too same thing going on in the media we want to scare people into our doors we want to scare them so much to make them dependent upon a sermon or a preacher that we're missing the entire point of the gospel when i say jesus is coming like a thief in the night it shouldn't scare you unless you're acting a fool in the night <laughs> thief in the night. I love that the Bible says there's a thief in the night. Well, when do we do most of our bad stuff? At night. Mm -hmm. One day I'm going to preach a sermon about going to bed early, too. That's a good thing, too. Listen, if you have more problems, man, here I go again. If you have really problems at, at the night with lust or whatever the case is, anger, hey, go to bed early. It'll help. Okay. I got an uncle, and my uncle is like, um, he one of those uncles from the movies, you know what I mean? One of those uncles that you don't want people to see, uh, you know, in public. You just, you, you, see, you don't want to see him, in, but you want to see him once a year at the picnic, and that's all you want to see him because he, I got that on. Ah, anyway, let's just keep going. Um, Because if I say what I want to say, I'll get in trouble. My wife told me I cannot say what my uncle tells me all the time. <laughs> I 
Okay, substance is literally, it literally means a substance which is real. It's a foundation or structure. It's the foundation or structure in which our faith begins to go forth. So faith is a, or hope, it begins to be a subject. Our faith is a substance of things hoped for. Hope, hope is real and hope's important. And let me just tell you something. When we lose hope, I've said this before a thousand times, it's a silent killer. Hopelessness is a silent killer. When you lose hope, you lose the energy to believe for something. That's why hope is important. I hate when people say, well, you're going to give them false hope. Is that even a such thing as false? What are you talking about? F hope's false. Hope is that energy that makes us believe for something better. Hope's a good thing. Give it to me. Hopelessness is, is what will make us uh, paralyzed and will stop us from going into that, which maybe God has called us into. So notice this. Faith stands as a substance until one receives what he is hoping for. Faith is that substance until one receives what is they're hoping for. Faith is literally the secret weapon in making your dreams a reality. Faith is a substance until you receive the substance. What is the subject? Well, the substance of that which is hoped for. If it was not for hope, there would be no faith at all because hope changes our mind to give us the possibility or something to believe for. Let me just say that. The dream is important. It's important. Because hope brings forth the possibility, brings forth the possibility of a thing that was assumed to be impossible. And if a thing was assumed, assumed to be impossible, that there would be no purpose or no need to believing for that thing. Hope gives us the energy to believe for something. If one believes that something is out of the realm of possibility, then believing it would not be necessary. Man, we need hope. We need hope for our children. We need hope for our marriages. We need hope for ourselves. I was, uh, we were coming back. <laughs> uh, as you know, I'm a charismaniac. And, and listen, I, I think, you know, I've been to some weird meetings um, before in my life. Because, you know, we want to, we want to, you know, the Holy Spirit, come on. G I've been, Mike, that's got me in some trouble. I've been to some weird meetings. So I got, uh, somebody convinced me to go to some meeting with some lady. And she was, first of all, she was about an hour and a half late. I mean, come on now. The Lord didn't tell you, come on, you're supposed to be a prophet lady. He didn't tell you there's going to be traffic. <laughs> yeah. Woo! These prophets. <laughs> God didn't tell you going to be traffic. He wants his people to be on time. Come on. I'm good. Okay, anyway, I just, I'm silly. Why am I telling this story? Anyway, we were coming home from this. It was weird, too. And I like weird stuff, but this was weird. There was, if you smell this smell, uh, uh, yeah, this means this, prosperity. This, if you smell apples, it's this. And, if you, this, this. and I sat by the gassiest person in the room. I said, well, what, what does that smell mean? That's got to be death and, and uh, <laughs> calamity and curses. I need to sit by somebody who's got a good cologne on. Amen. Anyway, we're leaving this meeting, and there is a, we're leaving with a family that I'd love. They're just sweet people, the Reese family. We're in a van, and there are, I mean, the fog's thick. It's thick. I mean, we, we almost have to pull over. And this young girl, she was 12 or 13 years old. Her name was Omega. And she stands up in the van as we're processing, and she says, Fog! In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to go and lift in Jesus' name. And I thought, oh, how cute. And all of a sudden, the fog started to lift. And we, I, literally, the fog started to lift. And I was like, hey, ask him for a Hummer. Or, Come on, somebody. Lamborghini, ask him, ask him. Come on, go for it. You got it. She would have never stood up and declared this thing if she didn't believe there was a hope for her prayer to be heard. She began to declare it, and all of a sudden that thing became to be so, and I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. It really does work. 
I remember that too. I was in Romania one year and, and there was a storm coming and all of our stuff was in the back of a, a trailer. All of our stuff, we had just gotten there from flying it from America and there was a storm coming. And I remember standing up and saying, God, hold the storm in the name of Jesus off so we don't get water or clothes or stuff on our, on our stuff. And it did. I mean, we got to our place, we unloaded our stuff and then the rain came down. Now, you might say that's coincidence, but you might say somebody was standing on faith and believing something was possible. J.M. Powers says this. He says, the best way to make your dreams come true is to wake up. Dreams stir our heart to possibility. They, they increase our imagination, which again is important. That's why the Holy Spirit contributes because he longs to make the impossible possible. T.E. Lawrence says this, all men dream but not equal. Those who dream by night in the dust, dusty recess of their minds, they wake up to the day to find it is all vanity. But the dreamers of the day are dangerous men for the many act out their dreams with their eyes wide open to make it possible. Mark chapter 9 verse 23 says this, and Jesus said to them, if you can, all things are possible to him who believes. Walt Disney said this, famous lines from Walt Disney, he says, if you can dream it, you can do it. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 says this, Now to him who is able to do, I love this, far more abundantly, exceedingly beyond all that we can ask or think according to the power which works in us. What's the power that works in us, you might ask? Well, read the preceding verses. It says that the Holy Spirit dwells in your inner man, Christ in your heart by faith, and you are filled with the fullness of God. Well, what's in your inner man? The fullness of God. Well, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. You know, this is about God. He doesn't just make our dreams come true, but man, he blows our dreams out of the water. I was sitting in bed the other day. I dreamed I wanted a good wife and children, and then all of a sudden I'm thinking, wow, I'm laying in my dream. Come on, somebody. Got a good wife and got how many kids? Four kids, which is bad. We went to that shooting deal yesterday, and it got to be at 3 o'clock, and I looked at Mary, and I said, hey, don't we got another kid? We got a baby at home. We got to go home. I forgot about the little guy. Pray for me. I mean, she's like, yeah, Derek, of course. Sorry, Paige. We were a little late. Anyway, I'm living in my dream. <clears throat> Back to Joseph in the text that we just read. Joseph's brothers were trying to kill him. Why were they trying to kill him? Because they were trying to stop and kill his dream. Let me tell you something, dreamers. Dreamers will always attract haters like a moth to a flame. Don't be surprised when your haters show up. Don't be surprised when all manner of men speak evil of you. Don't be surprised. Though who, those who attempt to live godly in Christ, guess what? They will be persecuted. Don't be surprised when your dreamers show, when your, when your haters show up, if you're a dreamer. You know, I, I got people in my family that I just don't tell my dreams to because they're all negative. They're Debbie Downers. They're, they're just people that you don't want to talk to because, well, how you going to do? You know you can't. You can. Well, listen, I ain't got to tell. Just because your life sucks don't mean mine has to. I'm sorry I said that word in church. I washed my mouth out with soap later. Look at Genesis chapter 37, verse 9. Watch this. This is so good. Now he had still another dream. I love that. Your dreams will attract haters and they will plot to kill the dream but you got to be bold to still have dreams. The, the question becomes, do you have enough guts to dream? Not only enough guts to dream, but enough guts to live and pursue the dream that is in your heart. Joseph did. He had another dream. 
He didn't stop dreaming. He didn't allow the hatred or any of these things to stop him from dreaming. But he watched this. He had another dream. And he told his brothers. And they said, lo. Or he said, lo, I, I still, or I have had still another dream. And behold, the sun and the moon. 11 stars will bow down to me. What a bold dream this man has. And the boldness to live out his dream in front of people that didn't believe or want the dream to come forward. Verse 11 says this, his brothers were jealous of him, but his fathers kept the saying in mind. His dream attracted jealousy. His brothers were jealous of his dream. Let me just tell you something again. Don't let the devil stop you from dreaming out there. And listen, there's some dreamers in the room, but there might be a hater or two in the room in the room as well. Let me tell you something. Don't be jealous of your brother's dream. You dream too. God's not a respecter of persons. If he can give them a dream to pursue and a dream to come true, you dream as well. Let their dreams stir up your imagination to dream too. Don't be a hater. Be a participator. Come on, somebody. Don't hate, participate. Don't hate, congratulate. Don't hate, graduate, meaning grow up and stop hating. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 15. Rejoice with them who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. I'd add, dream with those who dream. Don't be hate or be happy God can bless and motivate and strengthen you if God can bless the youngest Joseph was the youngest and the weakest if God can bless the youngest and the weakest then surely he can bless you as well if his eye is on the sparrow then surely he is upon you but the brothers plotted to kill Joseph and notice what they said in our text here comes this dreamer and this is why I rose this morning. Don't allow anybody to kill your dream. If the enemy can stop you from dreaming, he will, because he knows, he knows that if you just dream and you fathom a possibility, he knows that God can bring that dream to a reality. Walt Disney also says this. He says, all our dreams can come true if we have enough courage to pursue them. Robert Schuller says this, build a dream and the dream will build you. Brother Wolfgang says this, dream no small dream, for they have the power to move the hearts of man. Harriet Tugman is quoted as saying this, every great dream begins with the dreamer. Always remember, you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars and change the world. Here comes the dreamer. My question to you this morning is, are we talking about you? Will you have the boldness and the conviction and the faith to believe something that those that are around you might believe it's impossible? Or would you allow the age and the spirit of the age to falter or stop you from pursuing that which God could be working in your heart? Sometimes the question would be, how do I know if a dream's from God? Well, you still can go to him with your dreams. God's faithful. He listens. He loves. He loves. He loves to reveal himself to us. Sometimes we're so fearful based upon our past or whatever the situation is, we're so fearful of disappointments that we stop wanting to dream because we've been disappointed. I love it. Joseph dreamed again. 
I want to admonish you, provoke you, push you, encourage you to dream again. Maybe you pursued a dream that didn't come true. Maybe you pursued a dream that didn't come to reality, but doesn't mean that you have to stop dreaming. Maybe you say, I missed out, my season's over. But guess, guess what? When God pours his spirit out upon all men, he's pouring it out on young men and old men, meaning that d- your age doesn't disqualify you from pursuing or living out your dream. Don't let the voices of the enemy stop you from dreaming. And furthermore, don't let the voices of your brothers and your sisters make you believe that God can't form and willing to do in you of his good pleasure. It's a sad thing when the church loses its hope. We ought to be believing. We ought to be believing for the nations. We ought to stand up in the podium and see seats full, not because we want to build a mega church, but we want to build the kingdom of God. Any church that is satisfied with their Sunday morning attendance, whether you're great or small, any church that's satisfied and doesn't want more, you are, you are opposed to evangelism and seeing the kingdom of God come in. We should want every chair filled because we want to see every person come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Not for ourselves, not for so we can brag, but so we can see the kingdom of God come in the earth and be a part of it. We ought to be dreaming it. Before they let me have a platform, I used to preach in my living room when nobody was there when I was a kid. Oh, Mike, some of these messages would be good. I'd preach so hard. I'd sweat so much I got to get a dish towel, wipe off the sweat. I preached so hard one day, I got slain in the spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody, laid hands on myself, cast out a couple demons. Come on, somebody, it was great. Preached everything that would move. I told you I was brought up in the sticks, in the backwoods. I'd go to my Aunt Teresa's house who lives in the woods, and I'd walk in the woods, and I'd preach to the squirrels. and I'd preach to them because I'd see people. And every day, and God never let me forget that I get to every Sunday and every day, I get to live out the dream that I was dreaming. It should cause us to dream more. Yeah. What are your dreams for us? I'll, I'll close with this story. You can come help me wait if you don't mind. I'll close with this story. Uh, it started like many uh, evenings, mom and dad uh, at home, and Jimmy playing after dinner. And mom and dad were, they were absorbed and their jobs. They did not notice the time had passed. And it was a full moon. And uh, the light would shine through old Jimmy's window. Then mom glanced at the clock and she says, Jimmy, it's, it's time to go to bed. Go up now and, and I'll come and settle you in or tuck you in later. But unlike usual uh, Jimmy just uh, stared he went straight up into his bedroom and, and an hour or so passed and later his mom came up to check on him and she was astonished that she found him still awake and he was staring quite quietly out the window he was really fixed upon the moonlit scenery and she says what are you doing uh, Jimmy what are you doing he, and he says uh, I'm looking at the moon mommy and she says, well, it's, it's time for bed. The reluctant boy settled down. And he says, Mom, you know, one day I'm going to walk on the moon. Who could have known that that boy who dreamed, who dreamed about walking on the moon that was planted that night would survive a near-fatal motorcycle accident 
which broke almost every bone in his body and it would bring it to fruition this dream that he had 32 years later when James Irwin stepped up on the moon's surface one of the 12 that were representing the first in humankind to have done so you may stand to your feet maybe your dream isn't standing on the moon something big but maybe maybe it's to break the generational or the repetition that has been in your family maybe maybe your family has done this and it's gone this way and maybe things have been difficult or whatever situation or cases and maybe you dream to to further and give opportunities for your children whatever it is maybe maybe you're the first preacher or cop or millionaire whatever it is maybe you have a dream maybe it doesn't seem possible maybe the odds are certainly not in your favor what if God brings that dream to a reality would it not be worth the dream the ridicule the, the hate what if God can form and make that dream maybe your dream is small maybe it's I just want to have peace in my house. I just well, dream it. Believe it. Because God is able to make it come to pass if you're courageous enough to believe it. My first mission trip was to Romania. All my mission trips have been similar, but my first mission trip was and everybody else had a long time. I only had a month to raise the money. I think we needed, I don't know, $5,000 or something. And I didn't quite have it because I was a 20-year-old kid. And I don't know how many 20-year-old kids that can just write a check for 5000 Now I can wrote you a check for 5000 I don't know. Anyway, don't know what had happened. The whole bank might have bounced. Amen. But a couple of days before that, I worked hard and raised most of it. But uh, the trip was coming. <clears throat> and... The leader of the trip looked at me and said, hey, I need, I need 2000 or whatever dollars, like tomorrow. And he had told me, hey, you can sleep on the floor. You don't need this. And so I'm, now I'm needing the money that he said I didn't need. Anyway, my point is I needed to drive to Houston to get my passport because I didn't have it. I had to get one of those one-day things because at that time passports were really hard to get. And I had done this earlier, and, and my passport hadn't come, so I drove to Houston. And he was telling me this, and I was like, man, I, I believe God, you told me to go on this trip, but goodness gracious, I don't have the, the money. What am I going to do? And so literally, when I got to my doorstep, when I got back home, under the carpet, the welcome, you know, those welcome carpets under the, was a envelope full of cash. Set my name on it. Unbelievable. Envelope full of cash. And you know what happened? The teachers at my high school had found out I was going on a mission trip, so they went around and took an offering for me. And all, I didn't know this, and all the money I needed to go on that trip was in the envelope. Good golly. I didn't allow the discouragement. I said, God, you're going to, come on, you're going to, you told me to, I'm going to believe it. I don't have, because when God brings the dream to pass, who gets the glory? Yeah, he gets the glory. He gets the glory. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would cause these ones in the room to be dreamers, believers. That you would bring forth hope. Whatever situation it is that seems hopeless, God, I pray that you would have, right there, put your finger on it, right there, God. In the name of Jesus, that situation that seems hopeless, would you revive it now in the name of Jesus? And would you bring hope and possibility and, and faith in it so that we can believe and see the impossible happen? God, I pray in the name of Jesus, 
that you would cause these not to be downcast in their soul, but they would hope in God, that you would awaken, awaken desire for you to come through and come in the hearts in the name of Jesus. Would you cause these ones to not only be dreamers, but would they dream again and again and again and again, and would you bring their dreams to reality again and again and again? Father, give them the courage to have faith. Give them the courage to walk. Give them the courage to act as if the dream is coming true. May they exercise and work out this dream. May they run like the dream is a reality. God, give them faith and courage. And God, most of all, cause that dream to come true so that your name can be glorified, so they can see a side of yourself that they never saw before, that they can have insight and they can encounter your heart like in like waves. Come on, dreamers, lift your hands and ask him. Come on, all over the room. Where are the dreamers at? Where are they at? God calls the dreamers to dream. Don't allow what has been spoken over their life and what has been said about them from whether they've been teachers or parents or brothers. God, we rebuke these, these word curses over their lives and we ask that you would send these words back to where they came in the name of Jesus. Release them from the bondage of the words spoken over them and release them from the fear of man. And may they not be fearful, but but may they run with, with, run with, 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 with I don't know, with, with runner shoes on, where they mount upon wings as eagles. May they run and not get tired in the name of Jesus. Would you cause these ones to go forward and to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? We rebuke every word curse. We rebuke every negative thought in the name of Jesus. And we ask God that you would lift and release joy, unspeakable joy and full of glory in the name in the name of Jesus go before us and behind us cause yourself may we see the very goodness and the light and the love of Jesus even in our dreams God who makes dreams come true we pray that you would make dreams come true in the name of Jesus in the name come on speak it out come on let's get it I'm tired of living low and broken and hopeless I'm going to live out my dream. Go for it. Is there anybody, I want to do this really quick. I want to do this really quick because I, I got a meeting and we got things to do. But I think this is really important. If you've been dreaming about something, I, I want you to run down here. If you got a dream, I want you to run down here. Come on, don't be scared because the dreamers have to have faith. We, I'm here. I'm here. I'm the first one here. I got dreams. Come on down. Come on down. I want to pray for you. If you've been dreaming about something, you've been setting your heart. Look at all these dreamers in the room. Wow, look at that. See, you guys coming forward is moving my heart to dream more. Yeah. I'm dreaming. I'm selfishly dreaming for some of y'all that y'all make y'all's dreams come true and just bring me on the ride with you. Come on. I just want to let me be coattail in this dream. Come on. Yeah, this is what I want to do. Man, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. We, we have to dream. We have to see that which is impossible. This is what I want you to do. I want you to find somebody and tell them your dream if you're up here. Because dreamers have to be, and, and then we're going to pray over you. We're going to pray over, and I'm going to pray over you too. Find somebody. Grab somebody by both hands. Find somebody. Go ahead. One person by both hands. And just begin to tell them what your dream is. What is it? What is the dream? What is the dream? What is the dream? If you're in the audience, you can do this too. Ask them, what is it? And tell them. Tell them. Come on, you come with me.
For the dreamer, I want to say this. I want to say this. You, can go, you guys keep on praying, but I want to say this for the dreamer. If you haven't, go home and write the dream down. Go home and write it down. Write it down. Be bold enough to write it down and remind yourself of the dreams that you have dreamed today or that you're dreaming. Go home, write it down. The Bible says write the vision. Write the vision so those who would run that see it, though the vision tarries, wait for it, for it shall come to pass and it will not tarry. Write it down. Make it plain. And then pray into that. Pray into it and believe into that. And share it with people that will pray into it as well. And you might hear somebody that tells you that you don't know. Nah, that's not going to happen. And you tell them, do what I do. I don't believe that. Yeah, it is good. Don't let your haters pull back your faith. Be bold to tell your haters, no, no, that ain't right. Come on. Somebody had a word for me once, and I looked at him. I said, I do not receive that. That is not for, I love you, but that's not from God. I don't receive that. And I did it very kind, and I love them. Listen, let's stand on our dreams, write them down, and see it come to pass in Jesus' name. Y'all keep praying. We'll keep leading worship. God bless you. Have a great week. Here comes the dreamers. Keep going.